My, my discussion is, uh, will be brief, and it's really a sales pitch, and it's to tell you a little bit about the American Institute of Chemical Engineers, and then Scott Berger will tell you a little bit about uh, process safety and some of the things that uh, we've done. And that, our primary reason for being here is, uh, is to cooperate with uh, the Indian uh, Chemical, chemical uh, Council uh, in looking at ways of, in, of improving and training process safety in, in, uh, in India. Well, let me tell you a little, a little bit about AICHE. Um, we're a professional society, and professional societies always have high-level mission statements, lofty goals that we try to accomplish. And these are the goals of AICHE. We want to be a global leader for the profession, pr particularly in technology. And so uh, I'll tell you a little bit about the programs we have and meetings and journals. Um, but we really want to look at ourselves in a global basis, which is why we're here uh, in India at this time. Um, also, as a, as a professional society, we try to help chemical engineers move through their career, starting as a student, getting a job, working through their career, and even in retirement. And actually, that's a very useful thing to be in a professional society, is when you retire, you find the professional societies can be a good activity for you and it gives you, keeps you engaged, keeps your mind working. Um, uh, and that's why uh, a lot of our volunteers are retired people. And finally, we, we actually do get involved in trying to uh, promote the best principles of science and engineering uh, for society in our government. And so we, we do try to write white papers and make uh, position statements about issues that are of importance to uh, education and industry. Um, to our uh, government officials. We're, um, we're almost 100 years old, and to give you a, a sense of why we were started, back in about 1906, 1907, um, the chemical industry was starting to grow, and there was this new discipline developing where chemists were learning some mechanical skills and they were starting to build chemical facilities. At that time, the big chemical industry was cement, gunpowder, refining, although the refining industry was making more lamp oil than anything else. But there was a new discipline that was developing and so there were just a handful of universities that had coined the phrase chemical engineering and they had started the discipline of chemical engineering. And a group of people got together and said, you know, we need to promote this. We want to see the profession of chemical engineer taught at every university, and we want to have an educational program that's structured and disciplined. And so they formed the American Institute of Chemical Engineers. Um, and um, what we are is that uh, you know, we are individual members, uh, and most of our membership work in industry. About 80% of our members work in industry. Uh, a little under 20% of our members work in academia as professors and students, and some of our members also work in, in uh, government. We have about 40,000 members. About 10% of our membership is from outside the United States, and we, we'd like to change that. We'd like to see a lot more members from outside the United States. Um, we have a lot of student members. Overall, in the United States, there are about 20,000 students going through the four-year program of chemical engineering. Um, and we, about 5,000 of them are active as members of, of AICAG. Um, the other thing that we do is we, we try to help standardize the curricula of chemical engineering uh, through a accreditation board. And so uh, we're involved in making sure that everyone's education has uh, at least some level of uh, standards. And mostly what we do is uh, we, we have meetings that many people come to, and I hope someday you'll come to one of our meetings. Uh, we get up to uh, about 6,000 people. Our last meeting in San Francisco, we actually had over 1,000 students at the meeting and about uh, uh, 5,500 uh, professionals giving papers on uh, various topics. And so uh, here's a little bit more detail. Obviously, we publish journals, and hopefully, uh, if you go into your library, you'll see the AICHE journal. And I know because we receive many applications and many submissions and publish many papers from India in that journal. Uh, basically, the way we operate ourselves is we have technical divisions in different areas like process development, um, fuels and petrochemicals, uh, environmental. 
and these groups come together and they help program the meetings um, uh, at, our, at our national meetings. Um, the other thing is basically a professional society is a great networking opportunity and uh, as you develop your career and move on you'll find it's useful for you to spend time with people in your profession uh, if nothing else uh, to help you do your job or if you're looking for your next job it's often good just to have these informal networks and we do that through local sections which are uh, uh, groups of professionals people who have gotten a job and in, in working in industry let's say and then also we have uh, almost 140 over 140 student chapters so the universities have programs where students are also members and as I mentioned we do some government relations which means some advocacy, a little bit of lobbying. Um, we teach courses in chemical engineering, and um, we're going to tell you a little bit about the uh, process safety that we do. And then I'm going to diverge a little bit, and I'm going to talk a little bit of some of our industry activities, where we actually bring industry together uh, for special topics, and industry uh, companies work together uh, to develop new technology. Let me see. Let me, I, I won't, I, let me just try to hit the high points. Scott Berger is actually the director uh, of all of these institutes. And um, let me just hit the high points. The Center for Chemical Process Safety is a collection of over 80 companies that come together that bring the best practices to process safety together. And I'm going to stop and let Scott tell you more about that. Design Institute for Physical Properties is, again, companies come together and they decide they need to understand the physical properties of, of some small molecules and they collectively do research and have standardized physical properties that are published um, that uh, basically saves them work of doing that in their own companies because they do it together in a consortium that we help run for them. Uh, let me go to the top of the bottom. Same thing in terms of Design Institute for Emergency Relief Systems. We found that there was a need to standardize um, how people choose and design relief systems. And so this is a group of companies that come together to help do that. Now I'll talk about two of our new societies that we've started. Um, I don't know how popular biological engineering is in, in your uh, teaching and your profession here. But biology, it really has taken off in, in the United States. And part of that is because our government has given a lot of funding for biological sciences. And so uh, we find that uh, oh, over a third of the papers at our meetings now have something to do with biology and biological engineering. So we actually started a society for biological engineering where um, we try to bring in not only chemical engineers but biologists and other scientists to deal, talk about and have special meetings. Um, by the way, if you go to our website, you'll be able to, if you want to see more about this, uh, you'll be able to drill down and see some of the activities. But for, as an example, to give you an idea of something uh, really unusual, there we go, that, that we're doing, we actually formed a consortium to do the total genome, the genome sequence of the Chinese hamster ovary cell. And it's called the Cho Chip Project. The chip is, is, the, is the format in which the, the uh, array of the, uh, the gene is laid out. And the Chinese hamster, well, why are we doing that? That doesn't sound like chemical engineering. But we have eight companies who have contributed funds into a consortium, and we're working with the university to do this genome sync. Well, because that cell is used as a factory to produce enzymes and proteins by the pharmaceutical and the biotech industry. And if you know the gene structure, you'll be able to make the process, the biochemical process, work better. And for instance, Genentech, uh, their first major success was a, was a growth hormone was made in the Chinese hamster uh, ovary cell. And so that's chemical engineering. And uh, it's, it's certainly different than what chemical engineering was 10 years ago, but we think that's going to be the future for where many of you may go. Another area that we believe is important is we need to get more engaged in uh, uh, studies that, of how chemical engineering can benefit global growth and sustainable development. So we formed an institute for sustainability, and they're doing a number of interesting projects um, 
one of which is uh, to actually look at the metrics for sustainable development. So many companies say we're a sustainable company and this company says we're sustainable. Well, how so? How much? And there aren't really good metrics out there. And so what we're trying to do is put together a program where we could, a company could say, well, I want to compare uh, our olefin process to this olefin process. And which one is more sustainable? And obviously, we're going to look at things like energy consumption and water use and, and things of that nature and try to standardize that. Now, I encourage you, if you would, to, to go to AICHE.org. And if you look under technical societies, you'll see these. And, um, and you can join these for very little uh, money. I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a second. And uh, if nothing else, look at the interesting meetings that, that they have. Now, I, this slide was actually made for the group that we were talking to uh, down at the World Trade Center. And of course, this slide was put together primarily for people who have their degree and they're working in industry and they're well paid. And it is not meant for students. But I want, I'll, I'll, I'll change the punchline for, for you. Um, we realize that if, if we want to have more interaction and more members uh, outside the United States, that we needed to use uh, the web to do that, the internet to do that. And so we've made a lot of investment in the last year and a half to improve our web system. And we've decided that we actually can offer memberships uh, at a much lower fee than, uh, than we actually do in the United States. Okay, now I'm sorry, I'm going to talk in dollars. But I think you basically multiply these numbers by about 45, and I think you'll get them the rupees, something around there. But a membership for AICHE costs $200 a year for a professional, which is, it's, that's a fair, as we would say, chunk of change. And we realize that to be successful outside the United States, that we really need to find a way to bring that price down. But we think that we can do that. And if, if you're willing to take a look at membership, for instance, some of the things that we, we have is we now have an electronic library of over 250 uh, books in chemical engineering that's available with your membership to AICHE. And for instance, uh, Perry's Handbook is in there. And there are many other books that are in there. The interesting thing about the electronic version of some of these books is they're actually better than the hand version, the, the hard copy, because the tables and charts are interactive many of them. So in Paris, you can go in there and you can see certain charts. You may be working on a research project and you can actually place your data into this chart and it'll put your data point right on, right on the chart. They're interactive. And a number of the, chem, uh, the CCPS, the Center for Chemical Process Safety books, are also there. Um, we publish a monthly magazine called Chemical Engineering Progress, CEP. Uh, that's also available online. Um, we're starting to generate a lot of uh, traffic on, in blogs, uh, podcasts, podcasts where we have specialty lectures, and we're starting to pull together a lot of uh, RSS feeds. We also have the ability to do web webcasts and web conferencing, so if, if you wanted to actually have meetings on the web that, that would come with your membership, an email address, and I probably what I didn't Really talk about is uh, there's also for students a pretty significant job part of that of that site where I actually list uh, many many jobs that are available now these are mostly or almost all in the United States um, so for professionals we are actually looking at cutting our, our, our membership rate to one-third to give this program uh, but for your perspective in the US our student membership is fifteen dollars and for that, you would get the ability to uh, use this information and learn more about uh, the profession outside of India.